Red Seal exam prep review. This is for General Machinist and this is Mill Video 1. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to review the parts of a milling head but stop before you watch the video. In the description below there's a link to a test which is what I'm going to be taking up in this video. Go down and download the test and while you're down there please like and subscribe it's free and it'll help me out. Okay, now that you've downloaded the test, you've gone through it, let's see how well you did. Okay, let's get started right now. Red Seal Exam Prep Review Question A. What does this do? It's the power switch. Depending on how the motors we are wired, uh, high can be forward or high can be reverse. You just have to check it out and see for yourself. What does this do? This is the speed range indicating window. In a perfect world, depending if you're high or low, low would be the turtle, fast would be the rabbit, or high would be the rabbit, or direct drive would be the rabbit. Um, it should give you within 10% so you're still pretty good. This is obviously the brake. Now if you see right here that actually when you lift it up it pushes in and it'll lock it in place. Um, a lot of people say well you need the brake to change the cutter. Most people will put the machine into low and change the cutter from there. Uh, absolutely make sure that you release the brake if it's in the lock position before you turn the machine on. That does a lot of damage to the machine. And the brakes can't be adjusted. They just have to be replaced. D. What does this do? Quill feed selector. So, when you turn your quill feed on, you can select um, either 6 thou per revolution, 3 thou per revolution, or one and a half thou per revolution. And not all of them have uh, the six, the three, and the 1.5. Some will say high, low, and uh, an H, an L, and an M for high, low, and medium. E is your quill stop knob. Basically, when your quill comes down and hits something using the quill stop, it'll kick the quill stop out. And it also is a bit of a depth range What does F do? It's a micro nut. This piece here is a thumb split, so you can push the nut, push on that piece with your thumb, and then move it up and down rapidly so you don't have to keep spinning it. Not all machines are equipped with that. G is a feed reversing knob. You can set this uh, to make the machine feed downward or upward, or put it in neutral. I have another video just on this operation here as well, uh, located on, you guessed it, YouTube Shop and Math, H, the hand wheel. You'll find in a lot of cases the reversing knob and the hand wheel are usually damaged because people don't move their part away and they end up hitting it with a hammer. So be very careful when you're swinging your hammer what you're going to actually hit with it. For this to actually work, you do need to have your feed lever engaged. And you're like, oh, what's feed lever? Hey, what do we got here? The feed lever. Your quill feed control lever. So for your feed handle to work, you do need your quill feed lever engaged. What does J do? Well, it's difficult. They're kind of pointing at a couple of different things. There you go. That's a better shot. That's your quill. K. K is going to be your spindle. That's where you put your cutter into. What does L do? L is your quill lock. And it's very important to make sure that when you're drilling or doing anything else, that you, if you're moving the quill up and down, don't have the quill locked. Have it unlocked. 
It's just a piece of brass pushing up against the quill. It's like a friction lock. M. M is your quill feed handle. N is your power feed transmission engagement crank. Wow, that's a mouthful. Be very careful which way you put it in. You want to go basically underhanded with it. You don't want to try and push it overhand to make an upper arc because it's only supposed to go from the bottom to the top or shouldn't say that from the in a downward stroke or to a fro forward downward stroke as well. Now a cautionary tale, do not have this engaged when you're running above 3000 RPM. It can cause damage to a couple of other internal units. Oh, that's your, your high low lever. Let's go back a little here. I can explain it better. Using the palm of your hand and your thumb, push the knob in, have the knob in the center of the palm of your hand, push it inward. Then let's say we wanted to go to low, push towards the back of the, push in towards the machine and then push to the back of the machine. When you reach to the total top, you kind of release the, the inward pressure, still holding on to the shaft of the handle with your thumb and you'll feel it engage. Now, if you want to, oh, and also when you're done that, grab onto the spindle and try and turn the spindle. It shouldn't turn. And if it does, it shouldn't turn very easily. Keep in mind, you're not grabbing onto the cutter, only the spindle. So your thumb and forefinger. Again, if you want to put it into high using the palm of your hand and your thumb, push towards inside, push towards the machine, then pull it towards you with your right hand and with your left hand, Grab onto the spindle with your thumb and forefinger and try and turn the spindle and you'll feel it click. When it gets to that click position, release the pressure that's pushing towards the machine, but keep the lever shaft with your thumb in place and then move backwards, move out towards the machine. And then as long as that spindle has some resistance, you will know that it's in gear. And if you turn the spindle and it's not in gear, it'll click down into or close to the neutral position. So the high gear is called the direct drive. P, your speed change. Now this is gonna come up in a few slides. Do not change the speed when the machine is not running. And if you try and turn it and pull on it, what it does is it puts a small dent in the tapered belt that drives the machine. And within, I don't know, within a week, the belt's kind of junked. So please do not try and adjust the speed when the machine is not running. Spindle must be rotating. Q, that's what makes the spindle turn. It's the motor. R, R is your drawbar. That's what holds your cutter in place. You must stop the motor to switch or turn this knob handle. Hmm. What do you have to stop the motor to change? The high-low lever. You cannot change gears while the machine is running or the spindle's turning. You must have the running to turn. <laughs> okay, that's a spelling mistake there. Uh, you must have you must have the spindle running or spindle turning to turn this knob or handle. Change speed change handle. You must disengage this knob or handle if RPM exceeds three thousand RPM your power quill feed transmission engagement crank, not above 3000. This knob or handle must be in the upper position to change the tool. Hmm. It's the quill. If the quill is down, this thing shrinks into the machine. You won't even see it. So you need to push that handle back up. When, when you're first starting, you might not realize, okay, 
the spindles down two inches and some of these drawbars only stick out about three quarters maybe a half maybe an inch or two inches above and if you have this down you'd be like where is the knot where is the the wrench on I can't put a wrench on top this knob or handle must not be in the upper position to move knob knob or handle M so this is M and we know that's a quill feed right so it what in the upper position prevents this from moving it's the lock don't move the quill when the lock is engaged so have it pushed upward then move the lock well I hope you enjoyed this video if you want to see other awesome videos go to my YouTube channel shop and math also if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe it's free and it'll help me out just click on the icon on my face and I'll do the rest you have a great night.